the three worst judgments in the book of Revelation. Number one, seals. The seven seals. The mere mention of the book of Revelation can be spine chilling, not due to its horror story, but because it portrays the ultimate battle between good and evil, marking the end of the human journey. Revelation chapter 6 through 16 covers Satan on earth. This particular segment is the crux of the book and can be quite challenging to comprehend and put into practice. Unfortunately, we have arrived at the unpleasant part. The situation will deteriorate significantly before any improvement can be seen. Nevertheless, it is reassuring to acknowledge that the scenario depicted in these chapters is the worst it can be. However, even that is distressing enough. The seven seals are part of God's end of the world judgments. Revelation chapter 6 verses 1 through 17 details the seals. The action begins in chapter 5 of Revelation with a search for someone in heaven and on earth someone worthy to break the seals and open the scroll. The scroll's significance becomes clear in light of events. On it must be written the program that will bring the age of earthly history in which we live to an end. The seven seals in heaven, according to John's vision, hold a scroll, and as each seal is broken, a new judgment is unleashed on the world. The trumpet judgments and the bowl or vile judgments come after the seal judgments. The hunt for someone worthy to open the celestial scroll in Revelation 5 is the prelude to the opening of the seven seals in John's vision. John writes, I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll with writing on both sides and sealed with seven seals. This scroll includes God's judgments. No one was judged worthy of breaching the seals and unlocking the scroll, which saddens John. If the scroll could not be opened, evil would not be judged, and evil would continue to plague the earth. While John is sobbing over the unopened scroll and its seven intact seals, he receives excellent news. The Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Root of David, has triumphed. He is able to open the scrolls and its seven seals. This is a representation of Jesus Christ, the slain Lamb, who is also the Lion of Judgment. As Jesus takes the scroll to open the seals and deliver judgment on the unbelieving world, the beings in heaven glorify Him with a new song. Revelation chapter 5 verse 9 And they sang a new song of glorious redemption, saying, Worthy and deserving are you to take the scroll and to break its seals. For you were slain, sacrificed, and with your blood you purchased people for God, from every tribe and language and people and nation. You have made them to be a kingdom of royal subjects, and priests to our God, and they will reign on the earth. John chapter 5 verse 22 For the Father judges no one, but has given all judgment, that is, the prerogative of judging to the Son, placing it entirely into His hands. The Lamb begins to open the seals in the midst of the worship due to Him. The scroll can be unrolled a little further with each seal open, exposing the judgments God has in store for the tribulation time, little by bit. The first four of the seven seals open, releasing what are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse, because the judgments appear metaphorically as a horse and rider, leaving destruction in their path. The first seal. The first seal introduces the Antichrist. Revelation chapter 6 verses 1 through 2. 
then I saw as the Lamb, Christ, broke one of the seven seals of the scroll initiating the judgments. And I heard one of the four living creatures call loud as with a voice of thunder, Come. I looked, and behold, a white horse of victory whose rider carried a bow, and a crown of victory was given to him, and he rode forth conquering and to conquer. Several details are gleaned from the biblical account. He rides a white horse, which represents peace. At the start of the tribulation, the Antichrist will appear under the guise of bringing world peace. The Antichrist is given a crown, indicating that he will wield enormous power. He advances like a conqueror set on conquest while holding a bow, revealing his true intentions. The Second Seal Great battle erupts on the world when the Lamb releases the second seal. This is represented by a rider on a blazing red horse wielding a huge sword. Revelation chapter 6 verses 3 through 4. When he, the Lamb, broke the second seal, I heard the second living creature call out, Come, and another, a fiery red horse of bloodshed, came out, and its rider was empowered to take peace from the earth, so the men would slaughter one another, and a great sword of war and violent death was given to him. The second seal's fiery red horse represents chaos. Following the initial period of peace that precedes the tribulation, the world will devolve into violence, with people attempting to destroy one another. The Third Seal Famine results from the breakdown of the third of the seven seals. The rider seen by John is on a black horse and carrying a set of scales in his hand. Then John overhears a proclamation that people will have to work all day for a small amount of food. Revelation chapter 6 verses 5 through 6 When he the Lamb broke open the third seal. I heard the third living creature call out, Come. I looked and behold, a black horse of famine, and the rider had in his hand a pair of scales, a balance. And I heard something like a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, a day's wages, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not damage the oil and the wine. The Fourth Seal When the fourth seal is broken, John sees a pale horse. Its rider's name was Death, and Hades followed close behind him. As a result of the fourth seal, one-fourth of the world's population is slain by sword, famine, and pestilence, as well as by the wild beasts of the earth. Revelation chapter 6 verses 7 through 8 When he, the Lamb, broke open the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature call out, Come. So I looked, and behold, an ashen, pale greenish-gray horse like a corpse, representing death and pestilence, and its rider's name was Death, and Hades, the realm of the dead, was following with him. They were given authority and power over a fourth part of the earth, to kill with a sword and with famine and with plague, pestilence, disease, and by the wild beasts of the earth. The Fifth Seal The fifth seal of the scroll indicates those who would be martyred throughout the tribulation for their trust in Christ. Revelation chapter 6 verses 9 through 11 When he, the Lamb, broke open the fifth seal, I saw underneath the altar the souls of those who had been slaughtered because of the word of God, and because of the testimony which they had maintained, out of loyalty to Christ. They cried in a loud voice, saying, 
O Lord, holy and true, how long now before you will sit in judgment and avenge our blood on those unregenerate ones who dwell on the earth? Then they were each given a white robe, and they were told to rest and wait quietly for a little while longer, until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers and sisters who were to be killed, even as they had been, would be completed. The Sixth Seal When the Lamb of God breaks the sixth seal, a great earthquake strikes, inflicting massive destruction and extraordinary astronomical phenomena. The sun goes black, the moon changes blood red, and the heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was displaced from its place. Revelation chapter 6 verses 12 through 14. I looked when he, the Lamb, broke open the sixth seal, and there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth made of hair, and the whole moon became like blood, and the stars of the sky fell to the earth like a fig tree shedding its late summer figs when shaken by a strong wind. The sky was split, separated from the land, and rolled up like a scroll, and every mountain and island were dislodged and moved out of their places. Survivors of the sixth seal, regardless of their social status, seek shelter in caverns and cry out to the mountains and rocks for help. Fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? An intermission in the book of Revelation follows the opening of the sixth of the seven seals. The seventh seal. Revelation chapter 8 verse 1. When he... The Lamb broke open the seventh seal. There was silence in heaven for about half an hour, in awe of God's impending judgment. The judgments that lead up to the end of the tribulation are now evident in the scroll, and they are so harsh that all of heaven falls silent. The seventh seal clearly heralds the start of the next round of judgments, as John instantly sees seven angels holding seven trumpets ready to blow. An eighth angel takes a censer and burns much incense in it, indicating God's people's petitions. Revelation chapter 8 verse 5 So the angel took the censer and filled it with fire from the altar and hurled it to the earth. And there were peals of thunder and loud rumblings and sounds and flashes of lightning and an earthquake. When the seven seal judgments are completed, the second phase of the tribulation, which includes the seven trumpet judgments, will begin. Number two, the seven trumpets. In Revelation 8 through 9, John describes a time near the end of the world when angels sound seven trumpets. Each trumpet heralds the arrival of a new round of judgment on the people of the earth. The seven trumpets are described in Revelation chapters 8 and 9, as well as in Revelation chapter 11 verses 15 through 19. The trumpets represent disasters. The judgments heralded by the seven trumpets will occur during the tribulation period at the end of the world. Seven angels who stand in God's presence are given seven trumpets, which will be used to unleash another round of judgments. The first trumpet. Revelation chapter 8 verse 7. The first angel sounded his trumpet, and there was a storm of hail and fire mixed with blood, and it was hurled to the earth, and a third of the earth was burned up, and a third of the trees were burned up, and all the green grass was burned up. This plague destroys one-third of the world's trees and consumes all grass. 
This judgment bears some resemblance to Egypt's seventh plague. The Second Trumpet Revelation chapter 8 verses 8 through 9 The second angel sounded, and something like a great mountain burning with fire was hurled into the sea. And a third of the sea became blood, and a third of the creatures which were in the sea and had life died, and a third of the ships were destroyed. In heaven, a second angel sounds a trumpet. The result is that something like a huge mountain, all ablaze, was thrown into the sea. A third of the sea turns to blood, a third of the ships sink, and a third of ocean life dies. Verse 9. This judgment is similar in some ways to the first plague in Egypt. See Exodus chapter 7 verses 20 through 21. The third trumpet. Revelation chapter 8 verses 10 through 11. The third angel sounded, and a great star fell from heaven, burning like a torch. And it fell on a third of the rivers and on the springs of waters. The star is named Wormwood, and a third of the waters became Wormwood. And many people died from the waters, because they were made bitter. The third trumpet judgment is like the second, except it affects the world's fresh water lakes and rivers instead of the oceans. Specifically, a great star blazing like a torch falls from the sky and poisons a third of the water supply. Revelation chapter 8 verse 10. Wormwood is the name given to this star, and many people die as a result. Verse 11. Wormwood, Artemisia absinthium, is a shrub-like plant known for its extreme bitterness and poisonous properties in botany. The Fourth Trumpet Revelation chapter 8 verses 12 through 13 The fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars were struck, so that a third of them would be darkened and the day would not shine for a third of it, and the night in the same way. Then I looked, and I heard an eagle flying in mid-heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, woe, woe to those who live on the earth, because of the remaining blasts of the trumpet of the three angels who were about to sound. The fourth of the seven trumpets brings about changes in the heavens. A third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them turned dark. A third of the day was without light, and also a third of the night. Revelation chapter 8 verse 12. Following the fourth trumpet judgment, John observes a special warning given by an eagle flying through the air. This eagle cries out in a loud voice, Woe! Woe! Woe to the inhabitants of the earth, because of the trumpet blast is about to be sounded by the other three angels. Revelation chapter 8 verse 13. For this reason, the fifth, sixth, and the seventh trumpets are referred to as the three woes. The fifth trumpet. Revelation chapter 9 verses 1 through 5. Then the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star from heaven which had fallen to the earth, and the key to the shaft of the abyss was given to him. He opened the shaft of the abyss, and smoke ascended out of the shaft like the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened from the smoke of the shaft, then out of the smoke came locusts upon the earth, and power was given them, as the scorpions of the earth have power. They were told not to hurt the grass of the earth, nor any green thing, nor any tree, but only the people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. And they were not permitted to kill anyone, but to torment for five months and their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings a person. 
the Angel of the Abyss serves as the king of these demonic locusts. Revelation chapter 9 verse 11. In Hebrew, he is known as Abaddon, and in Greek, he is known as Apollyon, which means destroyer. The locusts themselves are described in unusual terms. They resemble battle-ready horses. They are dressed in something resembling crowns of gold, and their faces are vaguely human. They have hair that looks like women's hair, and teeth that look like lion's teeth. Their wings sound like the thundering of many horses and chariots rushing into battle, and they wear iron breastplates. They have stings in their tails, just like scorpions. These beings will be given the authority to torture anyone who does not bear God's seal. The pain they cause will be so excruciating that sufferers will wish to die. Abaddon, Apollyon, is the Abyss's ruler and the king of these demonic locusts. The Sixth Trumpet the sixth trumpet and the second woe heralds the arrival of yet another demonic horde. When the sixth trumpet blows, a voice from God's altar requests the release of the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. Revelation chapter 9 verses 13 through 15. Then the sixth angel sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who were bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels, who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year, were released, so that they would kill a third of mankind. These four evil angels command a supernatural cavalry of thousands upon thousands to slaughter one-third of humanity. The riders wear fiery red, dark blue, and yellow breastplates. Their horses have lion's heads, and out of their mouths came fire, smoke, and sulfur, and their tails are like snakes. They use their mouths and their tails to kill. Despite the severity and horror of these plagues, the survivors on earth still refuse to repent. They continue in their idolatry, their murder, their sorcery, their sexual immorality, and their theft. The Seventh Trumpet The seventh trumpet and the third woe sounds, and there are loud voices in heaven proclaiming, the kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. Revelation chapter 11, verse 15. The 24 elders say, The time has come for destroying those who destroy the earth. Obviously, God is about to wrap things up once and for all. At the sound of the seventh trumpet, the temple of God is opened in heaven, and within his temple was seen the Ark of his Covenant. And there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a severe hailstorm. Verse 19. The seven trumpet judgments have come to an end. All is set for the seven angels with the seven bowls of God's wrath. These angels stand inside the now open temple, ready to step forward and bring the final judgments on earth. Revelation chapter 15. Number three, the seven bowls of Revelation. The concept of the bowls, often referred to as the bowls of wrath or vials of wrath, is found in the book of Revelation, which is the last book of the Bible. Basically, these bowls are like containers of God's wrath. By this time, people had done a lot of evil, especially under a leader called the Antichrist. Before the seven bowls are poured out, there are a series of other events and judgments. The first bowl. Revelation 16, 
begins with a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels. Revelation chapter 16 verses 1 through 2. Then I heard a loud voice from the temple saying to the seven angels, Go and pour out on the earth the seven bowls of the wrath of God. So the first angel went and poured out his bowl on the earth and a harmful and painful sore afflicted the people who had the mark of the beast and who worshipped his image. The first angel, carrying his bowl, approached the earth. He emptied its contents. Immediately, a terrifying change occurred. Those who bore the mark of the beast and worshipped its image, the very emblem of their rebellion against the Creator, were suddenly afflicted. A foul and loathsome sore appeared on their bodies. People who once proudly showed their mark are now hurting and have painful sores on their skin. These marks are now sores. The second bowl. Following the first bowl, which brought painful sores upon those who bore the mark of the beast, the heavens prepared for another momentous act. The angel stepped forward. In his hand, he held a bowl filled with a mysterious liquid. Revelation chapter 16 verse 3 recounts the moment. The second angel poured out his bowl into the sea, and it became blood like that of a dead man, and every living thing in the sea died. As the contents of the bowl touched the waters of earth, a chilling transformation began. The clear blue ocean, full of life, began to change into a deep, thick red color. It looked like the dark, thick blood you'd see from a dead body. This change was not merely symbolic or superficial. The transformation read deep, altering the very essence of the waters. Revelation chapter 8 verses 8 through 9 described a partial contamination of the sea. The contamination is complete here. Every living creature in the sea died. We read, blood as of a dead man. The sea doesn't necessarily become blood, but as of a corpse's blood. It will match the appearance and sickening character of the blood in a dead body. The third bowl. The rivers and springs aren't spared here either. They too turn into blood. Water, the very essence of life, is transformed into a symbol of death. Revelation chapter 16 verse 4. Then the third angel poured out his bowl into the rivers and the springs of waters, and they became blood. This complete contamination is in contrast to the partial, one-third pollution of fresh water shown in Revelation 8. In the face of such terrible judgments, John's vision serves as a stark warning, urging us to heed the words of the Almighty, to turn from wickedness, and to seek the refuge found only in the grace of God. The Fourth Bowl It was time for the fourth bowl, an angel stepped forward, holding the next vessel of judgment. The target of this bowl was neither the land nor the water, but the very sun that lights up the sky. Revelation chapter 16 verse 8. And the fourth angel poured out his bowl upon the sun, and it was given power to scorch people with fire. All of a sudden, things started to change. The sun, which had always been a source of light, warmth, and sustenance, was given a new and terrible power. It began to scorch the earth with an intensity never seen before. The heat was unbearable. Everywhere, people felt as if they were caught in an oven, their skin sizzling under the relentless fire from above. The pain was intense searing through every bone, every fiber of their beings. And as they were scorched by the great heat, 
their hearts, rather than turning to God for mercy, became hardened. They shook their fists at the sky, not asking for help, but showing anger and disrespect to God. The Fifth Bull Upon the command of the heavens, the fifth angel set forth, directing his bull not to the seas, mountains, or rivers, but straight onto the very throne of the beast, the epicenter of wickedness. Revelation chapter 16 verse 10 And the fifth angel poured out his bowl on the throne of the beast, and his kingdom became darkened, and they gnawed their tongues because of pain. When this bowl was poured out, it made the sun disappear, turning the beast's kingdom completely dark. Think of a world with no light at all, where it's so dark you can't see anything. This darkness wasn't calm or soothing. It felt heavy. It made people really uncomfortable. The profound darkness, however, was just the beginning of their torment. The darkness of the fifth bowl is a preview of hell itself. Those under the judgment of this fifth bowl stand, as it were, on the shores of the lake of fire. You'd think, in the midst of such suffering, that people might fall on their knees, calling out for mercy or forgiveness. Even when they were hurting, instead of asking for forgiveness, they chose to resist God's warnings. Instead of calling out for help or praying, they spoke with disrespect. The Sixth Bowl in his hand, the sixth angel held a bowl filled with God's judgment. It was clear that this vessel had a divine purpose, and the angel understood the gravity of its contents. The entire cosmos seemed to come to a standstill in anticipation of what was about to happen. The angel poured out his bowl over the stretches of the great river Euphrates. An event of such magnitude could only be best described by John who bore witness. Revelation chapter 16 verse 12 The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river, the Euphrates, and its water was dried up, so that the way would be prepared for the kings from the east. As the water from the big Euphrates river went down, what used to block the way now became a clear path. The Euphrates River, an extended part of the Fertile Crescent area, is a significant landmark in scripture and a valuable resource in the Middle East as it runs through Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. The Seventh Bowl In the heavens, the scene was dramatic. The seventh angel with the final bowl of God's punishment, God ready to pour it out. This wasn't just any bowl. It was like the last chapter of all the judgments that came before. It really showed how severe and final God's decision was. Revelation chapter 16 verse 17. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl upon the air and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throne saying, It is done. This proclamation wasn't just an announcement, but an affirmation of the completion of God's ultimate judgment on earth. After that, the sky reacted strongly. Revelation chapter 16 verse 18 And there were flashes of lightning, and sounds and peals of thunder. And there was a great earthquake, such as there had not been since mankind came to be upon the earth. So great an earthquake was it, and so mighty. This was not a regular storm. It was the most powerful one the world had ever seen. The intense earthquake was a testament to how serious God's last decision was and nature was upset in the spiritual world because of it. 
As the dust settled, another profound revelation emerged. Babylon, that great city representing human pride, defiance, and decadence, was remembered before God. And in that remembrance, she was handed the cup of his fierce wrath. A city, once formidable and dominant, it now splintered and fractured into three distinct parts, and its destruction was not an isolated event. Around the globe, other cities, bastions of human civilization, crumbled and collapsed in quick succession. The grandeur of man's achievements was swiftly being reduced to ruins. This announcement, coming from the throne itself, tells us that there will be no more delay. In mercy, God has stretched out this scene as much as he possibly could. The seals were followed by trumpets. The trumpets were followed by bowls. But there will be no more judgments upon the earth after this. It is done. In these final judgments, God shakes the earth with a tremendous earthquake. During the chaos, it's natural to wonder how humanity reacted. Ideally, one would hope for repentance or an acknowledgement of the divine hand at work. However, even as massive hailstones fell from the sky, the human spirit remained stubborn. Instead of seeking forgiveness or understanding, the people cursed God. Revelation chapter 16 verse 21. And huge hailstones weighing about a talent each, came down from heaven upon people. And people blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, because the hailstone plague was extremely severe. Their hearts, hardened by years of rebellion, couldn't grasp the magnitude of their error. Thus, the seventh bowl wasn't merely a demonstration of God's power, but a clear indication of human frailty and the consequences of persistent defiance. The story serves as a somber reminder that while God is patient and merciful, there comes a time when justice must prevail. The book of Revelation talks about the world's ending and God's final plan. With each bowl poured out, the urgency and gravity of God's judgment become clearer. The purpose of the described events is not to cause fear, but rather to emphasize the significant consequences of a society that rejects its creator. The story features God's wrath. The judgments serve as a profound testament to God's righteous indignation against the wickedness and rebellion of humanity. As each bowl is poured out, the earth experiences unprecedented calamities, from painful sores afflicting people, Revelation chapter 16 verse 2, to the sun scorching the earth with intense heat, Revelation chapter 16 verse 8. It's crucial to understand why these events are significant. According to the Bible, they're like puzzle pieces that fit into a larger picture. These occurrences are part of God's grand plan, which serves as a reminder that God is in control of everything.